Okay, welcome to the third video and the last video of 2.1 types of materials. Um, in this video, we'll be looking at um, actually the uh, bonding practical that you will do. It's a formative task, but that would allow you to, the one and only dot point there, that would allow you to classify materials as molecular, metallic, ionic, and covalent network given relevant conductivity and melting points, and vice versa. Slide that I'll be going into, going on to, is this slide, slide 13. Oops, there. So slide 13. So it's the introduction that I would use in class as well. Um, you will be investigating different uh, physical properties of substances, which I give you, uh, which, which have different bonding. Uh, I think I prepared um, chemicals, so two chemicals of each, I reckon. Um, what to test? You're going to be testing conductivity of substance itself um, and solubility to water. Conductivity of solution, if you can make a solution out of the substance that you're holding and also its melting point. Okay. Here's a result, oh, so that's a method which I will show you on the screen when you do the prac. Uh, th having this result table would be very useful and to know what sort of things you'll be looking for. Substances you will have would be sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, sugar, vegetable oil, water, soda, it's a, a metal alloy, and zinc, and finally oxygen. So you will have yeah, that many different substances and you'll be testing their properties. And I'll give you the uh, fill-in sheet um, available for you. But if you're not there, well, this is what you would have done. Um, now, once you have done the result uh, table, um, you can start looking at what sort of um, atoms are involved, which allow you, so that's a metallic or non-metallic atom that's involved, by looking at the, uh, well, you might need to do a bit of research, like oil, what sort of vegetable oil, what sort of atoms are involved in there? Is there any metallic atom? Or would that be non-metallic only? You will need to look into that. By looking at that types of bonding, you have to be able to work it out, either ionic, metallic, or covalent. And that should tell you what sort of structure they'll have. Would they be large lattice or a uh, small uh, molecular, which you can do by using your brain. Um, and next discussion would be conductivity. Now that you have worked out the uh, types of bonding, you can, uh, and also structure, you can then work out what sort of uh, charge carriers are available. So when you look at the conductivity, electrons that get sent out from the uh, external source, like power pack, need to be carried somehow, whether that's an electron, because if you have metallic substance, you would have free electrons, so they are the carriers. If it's ionic substance, if they can freely move around, I free ions can be a carrier. Some, stu some substances don't conduct the electricity because there is no um, charge carriers. Conductivity, uh, that can be said yes, no, or to some extent, because some um, things exist in the world are semiconductor or conduct the electricity, even though they are part of a uh, covalent uh, group. Next discussion you will do would be on the melting points. So same substances, you can write the same type of bonding and structure. Then you will be looking at forces between particles again, which hopefully you can find the correlation between at the melting point. So melting point should correspond to what sort of force is between the particles. Hope you can. Then complete two summary tables here. So if you have got different four different types of bonding, what would go, would, what would be the, uh, the the structure? What could be the forces of um, between forces between particles, and what sort of melting point, high or low, you can expect, as well as the conductivity. It's kind of going back that way. Sorry. S um, types of bonding for um, conductivity. 
Um, it depends on the state as well, especially for ionic one. Uh, metallic one, what can you tell about its structure? What sort of conductivity would it have? For ionic, it's gonna be different things like solid, liquid, so when it's heated and becomes liquid, um, I'll probably show you a video on it. Um, and ionic when it, ionic compound when it is in water, so when it's aqueous, so ions are free to move in there. Covalent, continuous, and covalent molecular, we'll talk about conductivity of them as well, or you can probably find out from the practical that you would do. Or maybe you have done already by the time you watch this video, but that either way, you should be able to figure this out so that you can go back to the point of this video. You being able to classify materials as molecular, metallic, ionic, or covalent network given relevant conductivity and melting point data and vice versa. All right. So that's the end of 2.1. Hope you enjoy the practical or you will enjoy the practical. See you then.